This is a review for the Dyson 360 VisNav. This robot retails for over $1,000, but lacks many premium features like self-emptying and small obstacle detection. It makes up for this with raw vacuuming power. But to what extent, and is it enough to justify its price? Let's take a look. The VisNav's airflow was measured at 28 CFM. Its suction was measured at 5.75 kPa. These are both the highest readings we've ever recorded for a robot vacuum. The Visnav has a D shape with a very long brush roll. Its brush roll compartment was measured to be about 10 and a half inches wide, while other robots have compartments about six and a half inches wide. It also has a very unique brush roll, a soft brush roll with very fine bristles, while most other robots either have much longer, stiffer bristles or no bristles at all. The Visnav's brush roll extends close to its edges, but not all the way. It also doesn't have a traditional rotating side brush. Instead, it flips out this red rubber side brush to clean edges. With this design, the Visnav does very well to pick up most debris during its first cleaning cycle in our carpet stress test. It does leave a few pieces of debris near the edge of the test station, but picks up these pieces during a second cleaning cycle. As you can see, the Visnav paths quite erratically, at least in the small test area, and so we weren't able to get it to path in a straight line for our carpet deep clean test. That said, we still laid out the test strip and we still measured how much the vacuum picked up. Let's call it after approximately two full passes over the test area. And what we found is that it picked up a lot of debris, much more than most other robot vacuums we've tested. On default power, it picked up 14 grams. And on maximum power, it picked up 16 grams. This gives it the same approximate raw power, the same approximate deep cleaning ability as a full size cordless vacuum. Moving on to our hard floor stress test, the Visnav again demonstrates somewhat erratic pathing. In this test, the robot again does very well to pick up debris away from the edges of the test station. Its small rubber side brush properly deploys near edges. The robot just doesn't get sufficiently close to edges near corners for the side brush to work effectively around these areas. This robot was a well above average performer in our crevice test. It picked up most debris in the crevice even on default power and it picked up all of the debris very quickly on maximum power. Most competitors do much worse in this test. In our human hair pickup test, the Visnav picked up all the hair, and almost all of that hair was pulled all the way through into its dustbin. Only 10 to 20% of the hair it picked up tangled around its brush roll. Most competitors have a tangle rate upwards of 80, 90%, versus only 10 to 20% for the Visnav. This robot also performed very well in our pet hair pickup test. It picked up all of the hair in a single pass and was able to pull all of that hair into its dustbin without issue. Moving on to navigation, we tested the Visnav's cleaning efficiency and coverage in two different environments, an empty room and a clutter room. In our empty room testing, we see how it first paths in a small circle, then a bigger circle, and once it senses the edge of the test environment, paths along all edges. This routing gets the job done. It provides complete coverage of the whole room, but it isn't as efficient as the row by row pathing of most competitors. In this test, we can also more carefully analyze the robot's behavior in corners. It looks like it runs right into the edge head on in corners. This is how it attempts to clean the corner and then backs away to take a wider turn and clean the rest of the edge. If we look back at our pickup testing, we can see how it does bounce right up against the bottom left edge head on, but doesn't get proper pickup during this head on movement. So our pickup testing correctly simulates movement even in larger environments, and corner pickup does appear to be a real issue for the Dyson Visnav. In our clutter room testing, there are too many objects for the robot to take its usual concentric cleaning path, but it still bounces off of more interior objects before finishing up for a clean around the outer edge of the test environment. It gets mostly complete coverage, though it misses this area towards the right of the rectangular container. Note that it does cover this area in a subsequent test, but in this test, it moves the chair frame much more than it did in the previous test. The 360 VisNav is loaded with sensors, but it cannot detect and avoid most small obstacles like most other premium robots we've tested. In our small obstacle test, it ran right over all of the obstacles, except for the shoe. Other important specifications and test results we considered for this review are summarized here. Note especially that this is a mapping robot, and using the Dyson Companion app, you can label different parts of the generated map, set the robot to clean specific parts of the map, or set it to stay out of certain parts of the map. In the same chart, also note the robot's runtime, bin volume, and noise output, and how those specifications and test results compare to the average for all of the robot vacuums we've tested so far. Lastly, note the robot's length, width, and height. These dimensions make the Visnav just about as large as most other robot vacuums we've tested.
Moving on to what we like and dislike about this vacuum, first let's talk about what we like. The 360 VisNav is an excellent vacuum. It has a ton of raw power with a lot of airflow and really good suction. It's also able to translate this raw power into real world performance. Even accounting for its erratic pathing in this test, the overall result still shows that this robot can deep clean carpet much better than most other robot vacuums we've tested. And that's despite the fact that it has a soft brush roll that's better optimized for hard floor cleaning than it is for agitating carpet. This robot also was a top performer in our hard floor crevice test. And in our long hair pickup test, its brush roll tangled much less easily with long hair than most other robot vacuums we've tested. Lastly, we really like the dustbin design for this robot. You can pull a switch on the top of the dustbin handle to forcefully eject debris from the bin. Manual debris removal is much more cumbersome on most other robot vacuums we've tested. Though, to be fair, most of those models feature automatic emptying, while the VisNav does not. Moving on to what we dislike about this vacuum, the biggest negative for the 360 VisNav is that it's not a great navigator. Its pathing is much less efficient than that of most competitors. This robot also doesn't really clean well in corners. You would think that it would clean better than a round robot because of its D shape, but it's bumping directly into corners doesn't clean them properly, and it has to take an especially wide turn in corners because of its D shape. The only other major negative for this robot is its price. It retails for over $1,000. At this price point, there are many other options on the market that have many more features like mopping with self-washing and drying and small obstacle detection and avoidance. When it comes to general recommendations, there's certainly a niche for the 360 VisNav. If you want to clean your floors just about as well as a full-size vacuum, then the 360 VisNav fits the bill better than any other robot vacuum on the market. It's not the best robot. It has some navigational issues and it doesn't clean very well in corners, but it will be able to vacuum most of your home better than any other robot vacuum on the market. See the description of this video to check this robot's current pricing and to check where it places in our latest robot vacuum rankings. And thank you for watching.